This is the Broski Report with your host, Brittany Broski. Hello! Hello! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Hands off the wheel! Hey guys, welcome back to the Broski Report starring me, your host, Brittany Broski, the host of the Broski Report. There can never be another. A lot, a lot has transpired since the seven days that I spoke to you last. And I want you to know that uh, immediately off the bat, you're going to be mad at me. I don't give a f At this rate, we are turning and burning. Okay? Turn and burn. <laughs> Do I both month immediately? I don't even have to say it, dude. Of course, it's Tom Blythe. I'm like annoyed. I'm annoyed. <laughs> And I agree with it. I'm still, this is going to be my literal, put this on my tombstone. When will I see the sun? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But in our Western society, there's no chance. I'm angry. I'm livid. I, I think that. And I know that there's, there's a problem in that thinking. But like, can you be fucking serious for a second? Can you just like put your thinking cap on for a second? Thinking cap break. Everyone bust him out. Everyone bust out your thinking caps. It's not going to happen. But that the woman, <laughs> that the woman was the personality hire. <laughs> men don't reciprocate that because men are too surface level and they are too shallow to ever if I ever to just run into him, if I were ever to run into him on the street, uh, he would fall in love with me. Hosier, please respond to my DM. <laughs> <laughs> and I can exist in this level of delusion where, yes, put me in a room with Tom Blythe, put me in a room with Hosier for 30 minutes. I'm coming out with a ring on my finger. Hosier, I'll get back to you in a second. When it comes to people like that, where it's like, Oh, and on top of that, they're at the peak of their success right now. Like, they're on the fucking come up, bitch. Also, do I want to date an actor? No. I'm angry. I'm livid. My partner needs to know when to sit down and shut the fuck up and let me shine. Okay? <laughs> I am not opposed to dating an entertainer or dating someone who, who has a talent like that. Who? Because that's hot. Also, do I want to date an actor? No. Um, it's hot. And I think that they understand the industry, you know, and we could talk about it. It'd be nice, but like, I don't know. There's a lot of insecurity when you do this for a job, when you get paid to do your talent. And that's crazy. Anyway, that being said, Tom Blythe, I know you have a girlfriend, but if it does not work out, I am just, you know where the studio is. Okay. Tom Blythe, just, you know where to find me. Sorry. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way, WHAT ARE WE TALKING ABOUT TOM BLIFE, YOU MOTHERFUCKERS, SHUT UP! And, uh, what else do you expect from this podcast? I'm tired of apologizing at this point. I'm not gonna apologize anymore. And that's crazy. We are going to talk about Hunger Games, unabashedly. Okay. Watched Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Really fantastic movie. I'm just gonna talk about it. If you haven't seen it, I don't give a fuck. Go watch it. And then we can then come back to this episode, okay? Lucy Gray is the lead woman she is the love interest she is the tribute whatever and that's crazy and i don't know if that love was ever going to be strong enough to prevent what happens which the ending is very very i love an open-ended movie like that because first of all it leads for a, a sequel a quick sequel which please please i am begging and i love i, I do think I think the movie was very, very, very good. I enjoyed it. I've seen it twice at theaters already. I'm not going for an academic uh, philanthropic watch. I'm going for a pleasure watch. I'm going for the Tom Blythe of it all. For the love of Tom Blythe. So the movie all in all, I have some uh, notes about this style of acting that Lucy Gray's character, the actress chose, like some acting choices. I'm really over this girl boss, whatever. Like, I'm just over that sort of archetype of nothing bothers me. And 
Lucy Gray's character in the book, what's been described to me is she's very quiet, but she's very cunning. She's very smart, but she's quiet. In the movie, she's very, it's like this weird, bad Southern accent that she does. And she belongs to a group of traveling musicians in District 12. But the way that they did it here, the music was fantastic, by the way. The music is so good. And I saw, I was like, really, girl, we're doing musicals. But the way that it was done... I mean, the music was good and it was, it's Southern. She's an incredible singer, but the acting choices that were made in some scenes, I just wasn't a big fan. I also think what pulled it out, pulled me out of it is she's got such a Gen Z face. Arguably Tom Blythe does too, where they're just hot people. These are working class people. I think she was too beautiful and it kind of took me out of it. I just really don't appreciate the the girl bossification of it all. She didn't need that as a character, especially hearing that that wasn't how she was in the book. I don't know what that choice was to make her like that. I just, I think women are so much more complex than that. They're not strong all the time. Concurrently, this discourse has kind of been on TikTok online a little bit. I've seen some articles about it as well of people being really critical and uh, taking issue with the personality archetype of a lot of Pixar women. I think it started with Rapunzel from Tangled. It was mirrored in maybe Anna from Frozen, Moana, uh, the lead from Wish. I think uh, Raya and the Dragon, I think was uh, another one where it's just this, yeah, sorry, did I do that? Oh, uh, uh, Mar Marisol from Encanto, Mirabelle. Uh, she's another one where it's just like kind of nerdy, goofy, quirky, it's the same personality for every single movie that's come out probably in the last five to eight years. And I just don't appreciate that, again, because if you're casting a woman, especially women from different cultural backgrounds and ethnicities, why the fuck would they have the same personality? It's annoying. The beauty and the value in the classic Disney princess movies is each one is distinctly different. In the new age of Disney Pixar and animated films coming out of Disney, I hope that there's a renaissance soon. I want more movies like Soul or Inside Out. You know, these ones where it's not about a girl or a boy, it's about concepts. That also being said, I think it's time we move away from the messaging in Disney films. And not just Disney, I mean, everyone's doing it. It's not so much about the story, it's not about the characters, it's about the messaging. And I think that was beneficial for a while, and now I'm just kind of over it. I want to see a good new story. I really enjoy the movie. I, I've seen it twice. It's the Star Wars of it all, you know, of like, you clearly see him battling this, these compulsions and he wants to be better than the system. No. God, the Hunger Games, I love the Hunger Games, it's so good. And I, I want another uh, prequel movie. Like, I don't think that that would be overdoing it. Anyway, I'll say this, okay? Hot take, back to Tom Blythe. The curls, the long blonde curls, I'm fucking with that heavy. Oh yeah, run it. Run it. When he's, oh my God. When he's in the peacekeeper uniform and he's got the hat on, he's got that jaw and those, those wide shoulders. And he, I love a military man. That's my illness, okay? I love a man in uniform. And the prequel, I will say uh, some people have an issue with the prequel because like I said, there are plot holes. And if you didn't read the book, you'll have questions at the end because the end is kind of condensed. It's in three parts and part three is really short, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Tom Blythe, hot. Not much else to say. All these things I did for you and this is how you treat me. And there's no background music. Aelin and Rowan getting the ending that they deserved. Everything to me sobbed. I'm just going to speak freely because if you're like planning on reading Kingdom of Ash, just fucking skip ahead. They pay the ultimate sacrifice for the greater good of all the inhabitants of uh, Tarasin, of Irelia, of, you know, this, this mystical land they live in, where they fly straight into death. They fly now! They fly now? They fly now! Broski Nation, it's been a pleasure. Please listen. Rate me five stars for the love of Christ, please. I am begging. It allows me to keep making more episodes for this country's enjoyment. And without further ado, here is the French National Anthem in French.